I was reading Proverbs 21. Today is the 21st today. And found this very, very interesting. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures yourself, whether these things be so. Search the scriptures daily. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Check me out. Follow along in the scriptures, okay? <clears throat> Proverbs 21, verses 1 on verse 8. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. If your heart belongs to the Lord, the Lord is going to guide you. Okay? If your heart belongs to the Lord, even though your uh, heart is deceitful, um, if it belongs to the Lord, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Oh, we can, we can find justifications for anything, can't we? We can justify anything. Well, you know, a little bit doesn't hurt. Uh, we've always done it. We've got to do this, got to do that, right? We can justify pretty much about anything, can't we? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. And he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. And the fool says in his heart there is no God. Mm, okay? To do justice and judgment, oh boy, is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To do what is just and to have judgment is more acceptable than giving up of the fatted calf. And that's something. Hmm. And high luck. <clears throat> and high luck. And a proud heart. And the plowing of the wicked. Is sin. Hmm. How do the wicked. How do they plow. Oh, well, they, they tell you what you want, you know, they itch your ears. And because they tell you what you want to hear and bolster up your flesh when they go plowing, you know, to get to reap things, oh, they reap handsomely. Why? Because they tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. Are you diligently seeking the Lord through the scriptures? Hmm? Hmm? Notice it says, the thoughts. You get away from the scriptures. That leaves room and time for all other things to come in and mess with your head. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. But everyone that is hasty, only to want. Not giving due time to think over a matter. Um, being impulsive. Okay? There's a time and season for everything under heaven. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to think. You got to plan things out. You got to um, consider the cost. Count the cost. Before you jump headlong into things. Hi! The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Mm. Woe to some of these Christian preachers out there who are in this only for the money, are in this because it's their career, because it's a profession. Not a passion. Woe be unto them. Turn on, you got one of them televisions, huh? Turn on the television and check out all the Christian preachers, huh? You're on YouTube, huh? Look at some of these YouTube preachers that are all about the money. All about the money. 
this man, if this sermon has been a blessing to you, <laughs> sow your seed so you can reap the Oh, shut up. Yeah. Or, you know, someone trying to scam you through the... Have you uh, encountered in your emails? Uh, granted, now, with my situation, it might be a little bit different. But um, these um, scammer devils from other countries will send you like a picture of a just a gorgeous woman saying, hello, hello, dear. Hello, dear. Uh, by the way, if you get an email with anyone saying to you, male or female, hello, dear, uh, they're a scammer. Okay? But hello, dear, I'm so-and-so in such-and-such -such country, and I have all this money, and I can't put the money in my bank. Can I put it in your bank, and you'll get a cut of it? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. These charlatan preachers and pastors here on YouTube, in the church buildings and whatnot, who are just here for your money, here to promote a, a product themselves. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Because they make merchandise of you. They're going to get theirs. Because they refuse to do judgment. Whoa, what is the go-to catchphrase for the heretic, for the devil? When you do the scripture, make them aware of their sin. Don't judge. It's a go-to. It's a reflex action. Don't judge me. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Yeah. It's a reflex action. A reflex ac action to defend themselves. It's a defense mechanism. Don't judge. Judge not. The faith. The, you know, there are verses of scripture that the lost know quite well. John 3.16, Jesus wept. Uh, but I would say that probably the most favorite of the lost devils and the coadjutors and these fakes is Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Verse 8. The way of a man is forward and strange because there's no good in us whatsoever. There's nothing good in us at all. Even though some of you would like to think there is. But as for the pure... His work is right. And are we pure because we say we are pure? Well, you ask some people, they say, well, I just believe, therefore I'm saved. Or I can utter blah, 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 and I'm saved, and therefore I'm pure. <laughs> no, no, you're pure according to the standard of scriptures. Uh, scripture is what God says. In these verses, from verses 1 on to verse 8, we see judgment coming up twice. But the premise is that of judgment. Of judgment. Turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 14. More on this will be coming soon. I don't want to, but I have to. This will be coming soon. We're going to get more into this later in videos coming maybe next week. Maybe. We'll see what the Lord does. But Romans chapter 14. We're basically going to concentrate on one verse, but we're going to lead up to it. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 12. Him that is weak in the faith, a babe, a babe. Okay? Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Okay? If someone is a babe, newly saved, um, I personally think if uh, you've only been saved a year or two years, that still qualifies. There again, that's between you and the Lord. The Lord, uh, I've seen some babes who have been given some incredible stuff by the Lord and um, whose understanding had been widely open to the scripture 
uh, in just a short amount of time. Absolutely. But in a general sense, um, there are still a lot of things lacking. Okay. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Okay. This is also pointing to the dietary restrictions um, put upon the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Okay. About eat, not eating pork. Okay. For some reason, that's that's the big thing. They don't they don't get up all in arms about eating shrimp and crustaceans. It's always about pork. It's always about pork. Pork good. Eh? Pork is good. Anyway. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth all herbs. And if you want to dispu uh, disprove that the dietary restrictions are still applicable doctrinally for us, you read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? That's, you know, okay? When he, when the Lord was talking to Peter and he did the sheet, he wasn't talking about the dietary restrictions. No, he was telling Peter, hey, the Gentiles are now grafted into this tree that you're a part of. Okay? So that's what that means when uh, the sheet with Peter. But, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Okay? I, for a little while, was a vegan. Boy, I regret that. But, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. What is verse 3 talking about? I like bacon. I like meat. Okay? And you like veggies. Uh, even if you want to, I don't know why, but hey, if you are of the Church of the Living God and you want to be a vegan, your health is going to really, um, going to have problems there. But, hey, hey, that's okay. You, you want to eat veggies? Fine, fine, go ahead. You want to remain kosher? You want to? Go ahead, knock yourself out. Okay? Knock yourself out. I ain't going to get on you on that. But you, on the other hand, don't get on me because I like to have me... I, I like spam, by the way. You don't know what spam is? It's pig. I like me some pig. But you get some spam and you put some mayonnaise and bacon and cheese on there. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah. But see, you, the vegetarian or the vegan, who are of the Church of the Living God, it's like, shouldn't be judging me because I want to eat bacon. Nor should I be judging you because you want to refrain from all those things and eat veggies. Okay? So this is clear. Okay? I don't judge people on what they eat. I might look at you a little funny because you might be eating something to my palate that's like, mm, boy. But then again, when it comes to my palate, you know, from the things that I have eaten, you know, <laughs> bear meat, um... Piranha, shark, tuna, <laughs> octopi, haggis. I like haggis, but that's besides the point. Yeah, some of you know what haggis is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It tastes pretty good, I thought. <laughs> but, point is, we can't, we're not to judge one another on what we eat. Okay? Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. As a vegan, you got to do a lot of supplementary things to replace what you're not getting, the proteins and nutrients that you get from actual real meat. But, if you're my brother or sister and you want to be a vegan or a vegetarian, I'm not going to judge you. Okay? I'm not going to judge you. Okay? Not going to. Like I said, I might look at you a little funny. You might look at me a little funny, but hey, I'm not going to judge you for what you eat. Never have, never will. Okay? Now here's another one, which we will get into this in videos coming in the future. We have to. Okay? This is some of these um, Catholic sympathizers there who want to glorify one of the biggest days in Catholicism. And they come to this. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now, 
This is written on to whom? Uh, Romans chapter 14 specifically is written for those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. The context in what he is talking about is under the law in the Old Testament, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, Saturday, was the day in the law that the Jewish people, who are Hebrews, not Japhethites nor Hamites, okay? But it was the Shabbat that was the day stamped. This is the day that I want you to worship me and to give unto me. Okay, There are 365 days in the year. The Lord, this, this proves, out of your work week, out of your week, uh, there ought to be at least one singular day where you're like, okay, <laughs> and focus on the Lord. Concentrate on the Lord. You have 365 days in the year. Why do some of you go to this to justify your worship of the Catholic God on one certain day in December? And you come to this and it's like, ooh, what about the uh, 365 days, huh? But you go to a day of paganism, of uh, the worship of the Catholic God to justify it. What about the 364 days? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, I think you need to go wipe yourself, buddy. Okay? But the context is, remember, under the law, it was the Shabbat. It was the Shabbat, Sabbath, Saturday, that man, the Jew, those under the law, who wanted to be right with God in that dispensation, it was the Shabbat, the Sabbath, that was the day allotted to them. It's like where the Lord said, you, you pick this, this is the day I want you to do this. Okay? All right? So when Paul says, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay? Now someone wants to come on into these verses and squeeze in the pagan idolatrous worship of the Catholic God on a certain day in December. It's not in context what it's talking about. It isn't. Catholic. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. Okay? So this is talking about the Lord wants uh, from us at least one day. We have 365 days. He wants out of those, out of your week, he wants one day, okay? That's not even a tenth, but he wants one day, just one day, one day. And whatever day, it could be this. If you want to do it on the Sabbath, go ahead. You want to do it on Sunday, go ahead. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, seven days a week, go ahead. But if your day is like, well, you know, uh, Thursday, me and, me and my wife, we like to sit around and just, just, Talk about scripture together, sing a few hymns, turn off the world, and just consider about how fortunate and thankful we truly are for the mercy that he has given to a couple of wretches like us. You know? Again, you have 300... You're going to you're gonna get annoyed by me saying this to you, but I have to drill it into your head. You have 365 days. Okay? Pick a couple. All right? But why? Why pick one that is really big to Catholicism? Hence, yoking yourself up with the Roman Catholic Church. I understand. I understand why you do that. I do. I do. But he that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. He that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. And remember, under the law there was pres prescribed days of fastings. Okay? There were under the law. And in the context of speaking from the law about how it has been changed for us today because the law has been fulfilled, this is where Paul is, his angle is. This is where he is driving off of. Okay? You have to remember that. So today, us Gentiles who are grafted into the tree of the Jew, okay, 
keeping the Sabbath today to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is the Gentile. To the Gentile, okay? Um, it is not a requirement for salvation. It is not a doctrinal requirement that you, even as a Jew, a Hebrew, a Jew, keeping the Sabbath today. Okay? It's not. It's not a requirement for your salvation or to be right with God. Okay? It's not. Just like the Passover. Okay? It is not a requirement for you, Jew, to keep the Passover doctrinally today. I personally believe you should keep the Passover if you're a Jew of the Church of the Living God. Absolutely. Absolutely, I think you should. But is it a requirement for your salvation and to be stay, be saved and stay saved? No. No. Okay? You got to remember, when Paul talks about holy days, he's talking about the ones that our Lord prescribed in Scripture, not the traditions of Catholics. Not man-made. Okay? You got to remember that, you pagan heathen. Okay? For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Okay? Now remember, Romans chapter 14 in context is talking about what? The church of the living God. Us who are saved. Okay? For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. And who are the Lord's? Who belong to him? Those who are saved, born again, converted, are sealed until the day of redemption, who came to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him called upon his name. And he saved us, okay? We are the ones who belong to the Lord, not some nitwit twit who says, well, I believe, therefore I am, or I can say, therefore I am. No, they're thieves and robber, robbers, okay? You're the Lord's if you come to him his way, okay? Okay? For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be both be Lord both of the dead and living. Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Context! Context! What was it talking about? What you eat and what day you decide to worship. Whether it be Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, whatever. There is a day where that we as a church of the living God, individually, ought to give unto the Lord. You have 365 days. Why well, make a big to-do about one that's, uh, that was created by Roman Catholics? Why? This is why. Because it feels good to this, doesn't it? You... But why dost thou judge thy brother? There, I, Romans chapter 11 talks about um, the jealousy of the Jew towards us when they see their God in us, okay? I have experienced that <laughs> firsthand, okay? I have experienced that firsthand. And there have been some of my brethren who are actually Hebraic Jews, okay? Who are Jews, descended from um, the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hebrews, who were like, looked at me because, hey, you know, Fred, has Jesus made you Jewish? Hey, okay, okay there, man. But remember, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. The dietary restriction has been relieved, okay? We don't have to do that. You're right, you're right. I know. I No, I'm not right. The scripture is, okay? I've encountered that with several actually saved, born again, uh, Jews, okay, that jealousy, where they would look at me because I'm eating pork. It's always pork. It's always pork, okay. It's not shellfish or crustaceans or stuff like that. It's not even about eating off ostriches or whatever. No, it's always pork. It's always pork. <laughs> but I've encountered that, okay. I've encountered that. So, Brad. You know, you're saved by Jesus Christ. You ought to be worshiping on the Shabbat. Hey, hey, brother. He that regardeth, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. Okay? Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Okay? 
It's not talking about some Roman Catholic created holiday where these Christians like to force that in there. Okay? It's talking about a day of worship. And why do you make such a big to do about the certain day that's big to the Catholic? Because this is what drives you. Let's continue. But why dost thou judge thy brother? You're going to be a vegetarian, a vegan, I'm not going to judge you. You're my brother or sister, and I'm eating a big old slab of back bacon, eh? Okay? <laughs> Sl uh, slobbered in ostrich meat, okay, with mayonnaise. Okay, put a little uh, scallops and stuff on there and eat that bad boy up. Don't judge me for that. We're commanded not to. Okay? Or why dost thou send it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Who's going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ? Are the lost people? No. Those of us, judgment seat of Christ appears twice in the Pauline epistles. Judgment seat appears more than once, yes. Judgment seat of Christ, so far as I have only found, appears twice. And they're both in the Pauline epistles. So who is going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, sealed until the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? The lost people are not going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? We are the saved. We are the saved who get redeemed. Okay? All right. Let's continue. For it is written... As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Now, every knee will bow to the Lord. Okay? Are you going to do it willfully because you have been broken of your self-righteousness and he has saved you? Or are you going to do it because uh, you, you finally got your proof? There he is at Jerusalem and uh, he's judging you and going to cast you into the lake of fire. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Okay? So see, he goes into verse 10, talking about us, how we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? But then he says, every, everybody, is going to give an account. Verse 12. So then every one of us, saved and lost, shall give an account of someone else to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Account of himself to God. I'm not going to be able to be there with my wife at the judgment seat of Christ, nor is she going to be able to be with me. I can't be with my best friend, nor my best friend be with me. Okay, you can't be with me and I can't be with you at the judgment seat of Christ. Individual accountability. Individual. And see, Paul first addressed, addresses us that we're going to give an account of ourselves at the judgment seat. We're going to go to heaven, but um, our rewards and, you know, if you're serving the Lord just for rewards, just for rewards, then is the Lord really the focus of your life? Oh, I'm, I'm getting me rewards left and right. I, I, I know there are a couple of these people out there who are all about, well, I'm getting rewards and blah, blah, blah. Um, if the rewards come, praise the Lord. I'm going to be happy to see my Savior's face and to be in his presence. That's reward enough. Hey, if rewards for this come, praise the Lord. That's a little extra adding, icing on the cake. Okay, I'm going to have enough to answer for at the judgment seat myself. And so are you there, hotshot. Okay, all right. The rewards, if they come, praise him. Praise him. That ought not to be the standard 
that of our reward. Our reward is him. He is our reward. The Lord is our reward. Anything else is added extra. Okay? So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Look at verse 11. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Okay? Um, second Corinthians, and also, also, very quickly, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, two verses, two verses, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, okay? So Christ was once offered, Catholic, to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this to judgment. Okay? To, when we die, we're going to be judged. Okay? We're going to be judged. All right? We are going to be judged, uh, we who are saved at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? But those of you who die without Christ, you're going to be judged and put into hell. And then you're going to reappear at the great white throne and then eventually be cast into the lake of fire. Okay? More on that in a minute. But now go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 on to verse 12. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Context! Are lost people going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ? Bloop. No. We who are saved are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? So context, you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 on your own time. Pause this, read the chapter yourself, okay? It's talking about those who are saved, born again converted of the church of the living God. We who are saved, therefore must, therefore we must all Therefore, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Those of us who are saved are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? After we get redeemed, after this dispensation is over, it's the great white throne. Okay? That every one of us, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath had, hath done whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Oh, okay, sure. It doesn't say fear of the Lord there. Terror. You ever been terrified before? I know some of you stupid people out there, and I'm saying, that was charity, say, I've never been terrified of anything. You will be. You will be. Um, everything that Paul talked about and taught us, that the Lord taught us through Paul, I should say, excuse me, uh, was in the basis of the fear of the Lord. You got these um, fools out there who, who literally say, how are you supposed to love one you're afraid of? <laughs> I can explain that to you, but I'm going to be casting my pearls before swine, you schmuck. Okay? All right? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord... I'm going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account for everything. So are you. That ought to terrify you. That ought to terrify you and that terror ought to keep you from doing some of the things that some of you do that some of us, hello, do. You know you're going to give an account for that. You're not going to stand before the Lord and give an account for someone else. The woman thou gavest me to be with uh, she did no, 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 no. That, see, that's what lost people do. They, they, they're like, it's his fault, you know. They blame someone else instead of, you know, like, like, like they put a gun to your head to force you to do something. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You're going to answer. You're going to give an account. Okay? But we are made manifest unto God. We're, we're not going to fool God. He knows what we're doing. Okay? And I trust are made manifest in your consciences. Okay? 
<laughs> okay? What does that mean? I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you this because I care about you. I don't want to see... I... Believe this or not, I don't want to see that fiend from Blackpool go to hell. I don't want to see him go to hell. He's going there, but I don't want to see that. Okay? Hell is eternal. Fire, brimstone, darkness to eventually be put into the lake of fire. Okay? Hell is fire. I don't want even my worst enemy to go there. I don't. I don't. And I would be doing this and saying this whether um, there was one subscriber or a thousand. And to be honest with you, I don't want a thousand subscribers. I'm content with the, the few of you who, okay? But anyway, okay? This is my passion. I'm concerned. I don't want you to go to hell. Okay? I don't want you to go to hell. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may an that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance, and not in heart. Not in heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. But see, a broken heart is a contrite heart that belongs to God. But see, there are some that glory in, well, you know, a high look, well, Look at me, I wear the finest clothes, I wear the plaid shirts, and I, I make sure that my presentation is visually stimulating to the eyes and stuff like that. I look the part. You know, I wear the suit, and I got the big building, and the nice rings, and stuff like that, and the nice cars, and all the properties. Look at me, look at me! Yeah. 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 On the outside, they look beautiful, but on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You're going to give an account. You're not going to get away with it. Um, because sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily here on earth right now today. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is set on them to do evil. Okay? That was an incredibly bright eyes from Ecclesiastes, but, okay? <laughs> but, all right. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. See, a reflex action to... And again, I gotta, I gotta touch on this. Those deceived dolts of Mark the Messenger. Those willfully ignorant people who want to believe that garbage. Okay? Who want to, to believe that. There's no getting through to these people. Okay? And when you tell them the truth, they react, don't judge. And then they go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, which is for the kingdom of heaven and is all about judgment anyway. Okay? <laughs> all right? See, it's a reflex action when a heretic or an infiltrator or someone parading, you know, with the high look, who will glory in appearance, that say, hey, look at me, I'm a Christian, good for you. I, I wouldn't be one even if you tried to force me to be a Christian, okay? I'm not a Christian, all right? But, but, okay? There are those out there who glory in their appearance. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a Christian. Look at me. Yeah. You're going to give an account. You're going to give an account. And their reflex action to defend themselves is don't judge. Now, if you're my brother or sister... And you're eating a bowl of spinach with some uh, raspberry vinaigrette on it or whatever. And I'm eating a slab of ribs. I'm not going to be like, that doesn't look appetizing. Like, hey, 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 you like it, don't you? You're like, I like it. That, that looks gross, Brad, but you like it, right? That's right, brother. He's like, yeah, it's like, all right, cheers, let's eat, <laughs> you know? It's like, I... You know, uh, today's uh, well. Today's Monday. This today, me and my wife were just gonna, gonna you know, turn off our phones and uh, just sit there, and sing a couple hymns, and talk about you know. Remember this time? Remember when we were so scared and the Lord came through uh, for us? Remember that? Remember this? You know, give it on to the Lord. Hey, you want to do that on uh, Thursday? Or hey, you really want to do it on the Sabbath? Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Me and my wife are going to do it on this day. You got 365 days. Why make, the, why make such a do about one that is synonymous with paganism? It's because of this and your traditions of man. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 15. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Mm -hmm. Because if the Lord dwells within you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is, is, uh, which is in verse 16 and 17 here, which we are not going to read. You, you look that up really quick on your own time. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, but another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And how many of these Christians on their Roman Catholic traditions of men are setting another foundation? Oh, Peter is the first poop. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a foundation built on sand, not a rock. Okay. Now, if any man built upon this foundation... Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Gold, silver, precious stones can abide fire. Okay? But uh, wood, hay, stubble get burnt up. Okay? Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. And our Lord is the day star. Okay? Because it shall be revealed by fire, by trial. Okay? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now this is talking about our rewards. Catholics like to come to this and try to... <laughs> like to squeeze in purgatory. While all the while going to, what is it, Maccabees? Uh, to try to prove purgatory. Yeah, it's Maccabees there. Uh, other place that they go to. In the Apocrypha, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> Catholics like... It's talking about but you 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 go to hell already okay for you ignorant Catholics who don't know that's a different story but a lot of the Catholics are willfully ignorant stupid okay but this is not talking about purgatory this is talking about rewards rewards for us okay all right if any man's work abide which he built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so the foundation that you're building upon, if it is Christ, the work that the Lord will have you to do as his ambassador, having the ministry of reconciliation and word of reconciliation, those are works that are what? Gold, silver, and precious stones, because they are for his glory. Preaching the gospel, handing out tracts, doing what the Lord will have you to do. But because you want to make a career, make a name for yourself, and you want to promote something that you have written, or you want to do whatever, okay, what is that? That is wood, hay, and stubble. Okay? That's wood, hay, and stubble. All right? If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, verse 15 is the specific verse where Catholics will say, oh, that's purgatory. No, this is not purgatory. You're saved, born again, converted. You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. You, you got to get, you got to accept that, okay? You joyfully, pray, praisefully, Get over that, okay? You come to the Lord on his terms, you're, you're going to heaven, okay? You're going to go to heaven, all right? If you boot the door and climb up some other way, uh, no, you're a thief and a robber. You go the way of the, of the cross, the way he called, the way he chose, you go his way to him, and he saves you. It's his salvation, not yours. You can't lose what you don't got. Okay? <laughs> it's his. Okay, you're sealed until the day of redemption. There ain't nothing you're going to do that will get you unsealed. You play around long enough on the Lord, son, and mess around and don't repent and choose this over the, the world, uh, choose the world over, excuse me, over this, the scriptures, and over our God. You choose that. Um... 
you mess around with the Lord long enough, he'll kill you. He will. He will. Okay? He will. There's only so far you can push the Lord until he eventually will push back. And knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. But see, this is talking about our rewards. Okay? That's what this is talking about. Verse 15. Um, if any man's works shall be burned, wood, hay, and stubble, he, him, uh, he shall suffer loss, no rewards in heaven or, or anything like that. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. When saved, always saved. Okay? Another verse right there that shows that once saved, always saved. Okay? If your works are to be seen of men, to just for yourself, for your little petty kingdom, uh, you know, uh, your work's going to be burned. But if it is the work of the Lord that he will have you to do, that's the, that, my friend, is the gold, silver, precious stones. Okay? So, eternal security is there. Yes. Uh, but see, now this is for us, the saved. We, in this dispensation, we die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is appointed unto men once to die, and then after this, the judgment. We're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. When we get redeemed, okay? Once, see, once this dispensation ends, once the redemption of the purchased possession, that changes everything, okay? Judgment seat of Christ appears twice, both in the Pauline epistles. You die in Christ, you're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? You die outside of Christ, you're going to be judged, but your final judgment will be at the great white throne. Okay? All right? All right? Go to 2 Peter now. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2, just two verses. 9 and 10. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Yes, for every way, every temptation, there is a way to escape. Every single time. You look back in retrospect, you know that one time that you sinned, that the Lord was warning you, hey, be careful, that temptation. And you, you, you fight it a little bit, and then you cave in, and you give in to it, and then afterward, you can't take a shower hot enough and scrub hard enough with lava soap or pumice soap to get that filth off of you, right? And then when you sit there in prayer and you look back, the Lord's like, hey, guess what, dude? That was the escape. So you could bear that temptation. If you're saved of the church of the living God, you know what I'm talking about. You're one of these easy believers and devils who is like, give yourself without, give yourself into that sin. It's like, hey, it's okay. God's great. I'm saved because I believe. Or you just blah, 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 say something and you're saved. You, you give yourself over to your sin all the time without even a hesitation. <laughs> you don't even care if there's an escape, right? But yes, with every temptation, there is a way to escape. Or else, or else the Lord's lying. And it's, it's humbling when you look back in retrospect. And you'll see usually how simple the way of escape was. Yeah. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. And to reserve the unjust. Onto the day of judgment to be punished. We're going to see. The lost are going to burn for eternity. But hell. Hell is going to have somewhat of an end. Really? But see, it's still going to be burning. More on that in a second. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Government. Now, this isn't talking about our Jesuit government like that today. Okay, Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 13. This is self-government. Okay? 
self-government, examining yourselves, you know, in light of scripture. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Looking at verse 9 again, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And all who live godly in Christ Jesus walls shall suffer persecution. Okay? And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 19 is the second coming. We who die in this dispensation, we who go up, will come back with our Lord at his second coming, okay? And Revelation 20 is the thousand year reign, the kingdom of heaven, where Satan is bound for a thousand years. And at the end of that thousand years, Satan is going to be let loose. And go about and deceive the world. This tell Revelation 20 is very important for us to understand this one thing. There are those out there who want you to believe that during the kingdom of heaven, that there's going to be no sin during the kingdom of heaven. It's not true. That's not true. Okay? You read the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But you read the Sermon on the Mount, there is still sin. In the earth, even though Satan himself is bound, sin is still on the earth. Sin is still there, okay? Sin is still there, all right, during the kingdom of heaven. There are some out there, even some King James Bible in Christians, want you to believe that the kingdom of heaven, there isn't going to be any sin. That's not true, okay? Sin is not eradicated yet. And it is proven because when Satan is let loose, he's going to go out and deceiving, and he's going to go get this massive army. So that is obvious and evident that during the thousand year reign of Christ, that there is still going to be evil in the world, and there is still going to be sin. Okay, now granted, he's going to be on the earth, and oh boy, that's, you see, the kingdom of heaven, there's no faith, it's all works, because you're going to see him. You, you wicked people during the kingdom of heaven, you, you when you, <laughs> you're going to have to stand before the Lord, you're going to give an account like really quick, like because God the Father is on earth at Jerusalem. Okay? All right? But see, this thing about giving an account. Revelation 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whence, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Uh, in the description box, there will be the video, the three books, where we talk about the three books. Okay? The book of life, the book of the living, and uh, there's another book offhand I can't remember. But check out that video. Okay? It will be in the description box for you. All right? But looking at verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. One, see, this dispensation, which is by grace through faith, once this dispensation ends, begins the time of Jacob's trouble. And that dispensation is only seven years. So someone who dies in that dispensation is going to die, but yet not because it says in here that they're going to have to wait a little while. Okay? All right? But the great white throne happens after the thousand years. Read, read chapter 20 on your own time. Okay? What happens first? The thousand years, Satan bound and then let loose and then uh, cast out. Destroyed, beaten. Okay? So the great white throne happens after. Okay? After what? After Satan. After that thousand years when Satan is let loose. Okay? That's why it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, 
and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Okay? Now look at this. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell. Death and hell. Those who die and go to hell. Burning for uh, burning for eternity. See, they're not you're not escaping the burning. That's the thing, okay? They're going to go what? Okay. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. The lake of fire. Hell is cast into the lake of fire. Hell is uh, where their worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. And the lake of fire <laughs> is pretty. It's, see, it's not the soul annihilationism. You're going to be burning forever. Because earlier it says that the smoke of their torment goeth up forever and ever before the Lamb and those of us. Their, their smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever before the Lamb. Okay? Forever burning. But see, hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Forever burning. You're not going to escape this. Okay? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this tells us that not everybody at the judge at the uh, great white throne of judgment is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Why? Because after this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works, okay, and those who make it through that time of Jacob's trouble, okay, and then with the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, and once Satan is let loose, and then goes and wreaks havoc, and then is beaten, he himself, and sin, sin, death, hell, okay, are cast into the lake of fire. No more sin. And then, of course, begins the seventh and final dispensation, eternity, where there is no sin. So, you see, no way getting around it, dear friend. You die without Christ. Fire. Eternal burning. It says here, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. It's not soul annihilationism. Okay? It's eternal fire. It's eternal burning. And some of you have chosen that. And see, there are those in hell right now, like my mother, who are burning, screaming, you know... If someone could get out of hell and have a second chance, they would be probably the most zealous, most frightful of the church of the living God you would ever see. Think about that. Now, that's not going to happen, obviously, but just, you know, think about it. If someone who's in hell right now, and I know a lot of people, and so do you, that went to hell, um, if they could get out of there and be given a second chance... You would see the most avid, most zealous, most fanatical disciple, believer of the church of the living God you would ever see. You would see a, a person, spirit, soul, and body who would be, you know, what are you messing around with sin? You know what? You know what's waiting for you, huh? You you don't know what's waiting for you. Okay, think about that. Think about that. There ain't someone in hell who, number one, doesn't deserve to be there, and number two, wouldn't, doesn't want to get out of there. Don't give me this garbage that Manly Palmer Hall talked about, okay? Every single solitary person in hell wishes they weren't there. And they probably don't want you there. Okay? But see, the Lord... And this, the great white throne, the Lord is the judge. Yes, the Lord is judge. Okay, go to Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. 
The Lord is the judge. Amen. Absolutely. You're not going to get away from that. See, we the saved, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. After the redemption of the purchased possession, everything changes. Everything changes. Okay? Okay? The great white throne of judgment happens after the thousand years. And after Satan has, you know, been let loose and defeated. That's when the great white uh, throne of judgment happened. Yeah. So those of you who die without Christ, you're going to be burning for quite a while yet. And then even when you get to the great white throne, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire where you're going to be burning even more. Doesn't look good for you for those of you outside of Christ Jesus. But Psalm 7. Psalm 7, verses 6 on verse 12. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies. And awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. God is a God of judgment. Yes. Yes. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. You're going to give an account. Everyone is going to give an account of ourselves to God. We who are saved, we're going to get called up, you know, caught up. We're going to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? You who are lost, your eventual judgment is going to be at the great white throne. You're going to go, it's appointed on the man once to die, and then after this, the judgment. But your ultimate judgment at the great white throne will be cast into the lake of fire, even more burning. Okay, it's not soul annihilationism, not at all. No, um, you're not going to get away from burning forever and ever, yeah, ever for billions and zillions and trillions of years. Is there something wrong with you that you want that? Yeah, because this is too important to you, isn't it? Yeah. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Yes, he does. And uh, is there, yep, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, 9 and 10. Cross-reference that verse, uh, verse 9 that with uh, Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. That doesn't that hasn't changed in this dispensation, by the way. And what is righteous? What God deems righteous. Not what you think is righteous or that you can say is righteous. No. God tells us what is righteous. Okay? And God is angry with the wicked every day. That has not changed. That has not changed today. Okay? That crosses dispensational lines. And right here. If he turn not, he will wet, sharpen. He will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. If he turn not, if he repent not. Okay? You hear the gospel one time and reject it. You are a child of disobedience. You are a child of wrath. Thus said the scriptures. Okay? If you don't turn, you don't repent and get right with the Lord his way, fire awaits you. Eternal fire awaits you. Okay? Now, go to Psalm 58. Because Jesus Christ, God, our Father, is our judge. Yes, he is. God is judge. God is a judge. God is the judge. You're not going to get away from that. Psalm 58 do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye? Yeah. Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? What's your standard of judgment? My heart. Go to hell. Go to hell. That's your standard of judgment? I'm a good person. What's your standard of judgment? My heart. You go to hell. Okay? <laughs> yeah? Do you indeed judge uh, righteously? Oh, because your master preacher said so? Because it's always been in church tradition? Hmm? 
Hmm? Yeah. What is the standard? You say that this is the standard. But do you actually live by that? Yeah. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Weigh your hands in the violence of the earth. And this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. What does that mean? Comparing yourself among yourselves. Uh, comparing yourself among earthly, worldly, fleshly things. It's like, well, hey, other people do it. I, I'm not doing that bad. Hey, you know, you weigh your hands in the violence of the earth. See that? The violence of your hands in the earth. Judging according to worldly standards. Christian, huh? The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. <laughs> Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. You're going to pay. You're going to give an account for yourself. A lot of you people, unfortunately, that doesn't scare you. We as we have the Church of the Living God. We're going to give an account of ourselves, and we know that. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? Let them melt away as water, which runneth continually. When he bendeth his bow, there's that bow again, to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, escargot, really good. Let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. Talking about God's judgment here. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Yes. 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 We praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. As we have already seen, it is more acceptable to the Lord to do uh, justice and judgment than sacrifice. So when we, the saved of the church of the living God, see the just judgment done upon the wicked. We, Lord, praise you for being just and uh, for just and for your righteous judgment. Not, oh, I'm so happy to see you go to hell. <laughs> what if that were you hmm? what do we praise we pray, Lord you're right you're just you're true you say that those guys deserve to go down the hell because they didn't come to you your way therefore we praise you glory to you for your righteous judgment on those wicked lost sinners okay that's what we that's what we praise. We praise his judgment. We praise his righteousness, his judgment, his justice. Praise the Lord for it. Okay? All right? I, okay, what about these guys who have killed millions of people? Okay? They're in hell. Like Hitler and the popes. They're in hell. Okay? They're in hell. Praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. They did what they did. They didn't repent. They didn't come to the Lord on his terms. They're in hell. Okay? Waiting to be cast into the lake of fire and burn for eternity in the lake of fire. Okay? According to the scriptures, hell does have an end. Yeah. And its end is the lake of fire where you're still going to burn forever. Oh, people. But see, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Right there. We praise the Lord for his judgment, for his justice. Okay? For his just judgment and righteous punishment 
on the wicked. That's what we relish in. That's what we say praise the Lord in. Okay? That's what it is. All right, now Psalm 82. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Ye are gods. We got a video on that. Be in the description box. Uh, Psalm 82 is something that the uh, care Catholics, the Pentecatholic um, uh, name it and claim it people, and they like to twist this. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Shilah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. No, but what do they do? They serve themselves. And they say, uh, should, should a Christian help a poor person? Should we do that? Should we, be, should we show mercy as we were shewed mercy? Yeah. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and lowercase g, meaning being able to judge what is good and evil, and we're defunct in that anyway, okay, or in that, inept, I should say, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes, rise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now, go to Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2. So, yeah, most people will not deny or argue at all that God is, a ju is judge. Most people won't. Most people won't. It's when we, who are his ambassadors, who judge ourselves and others according to the scriptures. That's when they come up with Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. That's when they, most people don't are will not protest. Well, the Lord is the judge. God's judge, not you, right? But yet we are the body of Christ, and if you don't judge, how are you to know what is good and evil? And how are you to know what good and evil is if you don't have a perfect standard to judge? Okay. Okay. Romans chapter two. Verses 1 unto verse 11. Okay. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. See, see, you can't judge. Shut up. Okay. This is Romans chapter 2 after Romans chapter 1. Okay. Lost people who are going to hell judging themselves better than one another while still going to hell. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. Comprende? Okay? You, you're, you're going to hell, okay? And you're going to say, well, I'm better than so-and-so, but yet you're both going to hell anyway. Doesn't make sense. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Yeah. Like a drunkard, a lost drunkard, judging another, uh, judging a sodomite, okay? But yet they're a drunkard, or vice versa. Both are going to hell, okay? Both are going to hell. Having come to the Lord broken and contrite and in fear of him, call upon his name. Both going to hell, both judging one another while you're both going to hell. <laughs> okay, okay, this, that's what that's talking about. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to belief? Repentance. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. Repentance. 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 Repentance is not turning away from your sin. You, you couldn't do that if you were held at gunpoint. The repentance is repenting of your self-righteousness. 
Okay? You couldn't give up your sins and then come to the Lord and expect him to save you if uh, a gun was held at your head. You couldn't do it. The repentance that you are repenting of is that you're a good person, that you can do better. I'm not that bad. Your self-righteousness, that's the repentance. Okay? That's the repentance. All right? But after thy, right here, but after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to kneel. Okay? Treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Righteous judgment of God. Time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, the great white throne, when death and hell are cast into the lake of fire to burn for the for millions and trillions and zillions of years. Yeah. But after thy hardness and impentient heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Mm -hmm. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and Im immortality and eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first, also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. And what is good? What is good? Okay? God is good. The scriptures are good. Okay? But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons. Sorry. Got to write this down. For there is no respect of persons with God. But, but if you're black, he's a respecter of person. Oh, but if you're an elect, you're, he's a respecter of persons. Oh, if you're a Baptist, he's a respecter of persons. Right? No. Oh, if you're actually a Jew, he's a respecter of persons. If you're white, he's, yes he is. Uh, if, if you've seen the Lord, right? He's a respecter of persons. All those people who say that kind of nonsense are telling you that God is a respecter of persons. I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen the Lord. So you're saying God is a respecter of persons. You're black. Therefore, you're a chosen one. You're saying God is a respecter of persons. You're white. You're a Brizraelite, right? God is a respecter of persons? No. 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 No, dear friend. No, dear friend. And now... This is talking about the pot calling the kettle black. About lost people who are going to hell anyway, <laughs> thinking that there's something when they're not. And we're, we're nothing. We are nothing. Are what we are, are by Christ who dwells within us. Okay? But see, the judgment that is talked about in Matthew chapter 7 and also here is hypocritical judgment, which was a just addressed hypocritical judgment lost people judging lost people who are both going to hell okay we who are of the church of the living god who have god within us we are to judge because we have the lord within us but we have a standard the authorized version on whence we judge ourselves and others but see it's hypocritical judgment that it's being condemned. Okay? But see, devils bring up Matthew chapter 7 specifically to say, don't judge when they're cornered about their sin. Every single time. It's funny that none of these people come to Romans about that. Romans chapter 2, verse 17 on verse 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew. You call yourself a Jew, right? Yeah. And, may, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide to the, of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hath, which hath the form of knowledge, and of the truth of the law. Therefore, thou which teachest another, Teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Yeah. And right away I think of Mark the Messenger. 
who boasts about how people are given to his ministry and puts their name out there for they can receive glory of men. Therefore, they have their reward. Okay? A liar who wants to bring you under the law. Okay? Thou that says a man should cannot commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? I've never cheated on my wife or my husband in all my life. Yeah, but what does the Lord say? If you look upon a maid on lust with uh, lust in your heart after her, you have committed adultery? Okay? There are other forms of adultery rather than just physical. Oh, no, that can't be, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The thought, of, uh, the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? Okay? <laughs> oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I therefore praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacral sacrilege? I am against the marionette statutes. I am against the pagan idolatry, amen. But you look at that face of yours in the mirror, buddy. You look at that face of yours in the mirror. Ugh. Sacrilege. You might not worship a marionette statue. You might not worship a Christ mastery. You might not worship this, that, or the other thing. But at the end of the day, are you worshiping yourself? You pat yourself on the back? Huh? Think about it. Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? Got to keep the commandments. Got to keep the law. Can you do it perfectly? <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. The, law, the Lord fulfilled the law and kept it perfectly because you can't. See? Okay? That's why we go through the Lord. He kept the law. He kept it perfectly. The law was there to bring us on to Christ. Okay? All right. All right. You can't keep the law. All right. And if you've broken one point of the law, you've broken it all. Okay. You should try. You should try, uh, stop trying to save yourself and come to the Lord on his terms and really get saved. Okay. For the name of God is blasphemed, blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Those who speak words to no prophet trying to get you back under the law. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, see, now this is talking about hypocritical judgment, like it does in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, which is in context of the kingdom of heaven anyway. But see, that hypocritical judgment, where it says that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, is echoed in Romans chapter 2, hypocritical judgment. The Lord has saved me. The Lord lives in me. I have a perfect standard where I judge myself but also judge others according to this. This is what I judge off of. And when you got some guy who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth, who is against the redemption of the purchased possession and trying to bring you under the law, that is not scripturally for us today. Therefore, I'm going to... And since he's a Jew on top of it, I'm going to judge him because I have a standard and he's not walking in line with this standard. That's how that works. That's how that works. We are to judge, okay? Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We want verses 10 on to verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 15. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I would that will be coming eventually. But see, too, we're, we're in this, and this, this gets in the way every single time. It's because of this that you're gonna be worshiping the Catholic God next month. Okay? More on that later. But it's because of this. This gets in the way every time. Every single time. 
Okay? For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Christ, and I of Cephas, excuse me, uh, <laughs> excuse me, okay? And I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? And this is exactly what is going to be done coming up this month. People are going to pick sides because one guy is going to be saying one thing and one guy is going to be saying another thing. And both are going to be claiming, both are going to be using the scriptures to try to justify it. But one is actually in line with scripture and one isn't. What's the problem? This. This. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I, that I had baptized in my own name. Okay? And that, and that was chapter 1 that we just read. We were supposed to read chapter 2. Excuse me. But, there again, there again, there, are, there is this division especially with this month coming up, that's going to be sown by people who worship this. Okay? Now, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 15, like we were supposed to read. Okay? Thank you, Lord. That was uh, me misreading my notes. But still, that's going to happen. Division is going to be sown amongst the body of Christ by people who are worshiping this and the, tra the traditions of men, the traditions of Catholics. That's coming up. Okay? But, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 15. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the capital S, Spirit of God, the Lord himself. Okay? Now, we have received not the spirit of, this, of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And that's him himself. Okay? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The spirit of God that liveth within you, comparing spiritual things, the authorized version is the spiritual book. Okay? But the natural man, unregenerate, the man of this earth, okay, receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, capital S, denotes the Lord himself, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Because why? The Lord is our judge. Right? So see, we are to judge. We are to judge according to the scripture. But now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? Therefore... Seeing we, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, walking our talk. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, and that's Satan, Lucifer, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Okay? We preach Jesus, him crucified. Okay? The death, burial, and resurrection. We walk our talk. Okay? We live according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? Now go to... Now remember 1 Corinthians chapter 4 because we will hit, touch on that again. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? First, uh, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter, uh, one second, please. All right. I just read again out of the wrong place. First Corinthians chapter four. Okay. I, that's twice now. I've read out of the uh, wrong place. First Corinthians chapter four, verses one on to verse five. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judges, judgeth me is the Lord. He that judgeth me is the Lord. This is what we ought to remember. However, reading out of those areas where we did um, actually works, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Verse, uh, verse 5 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Remember this, okay? Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. So see, we're not supposed to judge now. No. No. What is he talking about? Okay. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ. And we read uh, by mistake, but actuality, uh, needfully, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, about scenes that we have this ministry, ministry, we have renounced the things of dishonesty. So what this means is, okay, I don't know what fruit or what rewards is going to come for what the Lord has guided me on to do. You don't know what f uh, fruits or rewards are going to come to you by what the Lord has called you on to do. Okay? You don't know what what uh, what profit your ministry is going to be unto you at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? So when he says, therefore judge nothing before the time, okay? That's what he's talking about. Until the Lord come who will bring who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Okay? So see, this judgment right here that he is talking about, this ministry that we have, we're ministries, uh, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? That's what he's talking about when he says, judge nothing for, before the time. But see, these people who want to defend their sin. They'll come to, they'll go to all kinds of places to defend, don't judge, don't judge. They will. But they won't read the context. They won't read the context. They'll do anything to def defend their sin with a death grip and try to justify it through the scripture. Okay? Now remember this, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4. Verses 1 on to 5, because we will be hitting that. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, not 2, okay? But those mistakes kind of worked, didn't it? Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 5. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Hmm. Smallest matters. Between brethren, too. Don't judge, right? We're supposed to judge. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Okay, you wicked people who say don't judge to defend your sin or a heretic? Okay? If ye, if then ye having judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed esteem, in the church, I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that for the unbelievers. Hmm. Hmm. We, we, we added verse 6 there. But, um, see, we are to judge as the church of the living God. Okay? 
And we are all in the ministry of reconciliation. And we are to renounce the things of dishonesty. And we don't know what fruit or what is going to become of how our Lord uses us. Okay? But see, we are to judge, brethren, people. We are to judge. We are to judge according to what? The standard. Because Paul says here uh, in verse 3, in 1 Corinthians 4, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, of man or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not myself, mine own self. What does that mean? We'll get back to that in a bit. Okay. Now, Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 on to verse 16. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever ever loveth and maketh a lie. So see, this shows us right here that people who are without, okay, who loveth a lie, they're not dead. They're not, they're burning forever, okay? All right? Eternal punishment in the lake of fire. This is what this shows us, okay? No sin. No sin in the final dispensation, which is eternity, okay? Sin will be done away with, cast into the lake of fire. But those that are without, in that lake of fire, see? I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you, unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Okay? So our Lord is the judge. Our Lord is the judge. And we as his body, the church of the living God, we are to judge. Judge what? According to the standard, the authorized version. But now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Judgment. Okay? See, the people who say don't judge, don't do this first. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 8. This is the third time that I am coming. This is the third time I am coming, on, coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and therefore tell you, as if I were present, the second time, and being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye speak a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you, God in us. You know, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20, on, uh, what is it? Uh, Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, uh, 20 and 21. I am, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? If Christ Jesus isn't in you, then you're reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Hmm. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. And not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest. 
though we be as reprobates in the eyes of the world, because we have what? As we have already looked at. Thank you, Lord, that we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty and we don't handle the word of God. What? What was that? Praise you, Lord, for that mistake. <laughs> okay. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I, what we, what I thought was an accident, reading uh, in other places and scriptures besides my notes, um, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, you, and you saw that. You're like, Brad, you're reading, but see how that plays together? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But see, we're to examine ourselves first. Hypocritical judgment is what is condemned in Scripture. Now, we're all sinners. We sin every day, yes. But see, I'm no longer a sodomite. I can go to a sodomite and say, hey, unless you get right with the Lord, uh, you're going to go to hell. God hates what you're doing. You're going to go to hell. you got to stop that. Okay? Here, let me tell you about Christ. Okay? I can do that. Okay. Someone who was a drunkard, no longer a drunkard, can go to the drunks out there. It's like, hey, you know, that stuff's killing you. Um, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Come here, let me tell you about Christ. Okay? All right? Verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For the truth. Okay? We are to examine ourselves. And see, that's something that these people who say, don't judge, that's something they're not doing. That's something they're not doing. Because they want to defend their sin and themselves, or a heretic. So they say, don't judge. And, and quote Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, till you're chartreuse in the face. Okay, But that's talking about hypocritical judgment. And the fact that there is judgment. And they said, well, God's judged, not you. But see, we have God within us. And how are we to know what is good and evil unless we judge through the scriptures what is good? Okay? Your don't judge thing falls apart real quickly when you examine the scriptures. But see, now go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 19. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the Christians. Oh, the house of God. <laughs> it's not a church building, by the way. We are of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. We are of the house of God. We are of the Lord's house, of his, of his, of his body. Okay? That's what that means. It's not talking about a building. Okay? For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? See, we judge ourselves first. You do that, right? But see, those who say don't judge or God knows my heart. You're not judging yourself according to the scriptures, man. Woman, prove it. Don't judge. Uh, the, 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 the scriptures say what you're doing is wrong. Don't judge me. I, I, I'm not. I'm the scripture says. <laughs> okay? I'm, the scriptures, they're, they're judging you. Okay? I'm informing you of the scriptures. Okay? Yes, but the scripture is judging you. Okay? And... I judge myself first. Okay? So there be no hypocritical judgment. Comprende? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall the ungodly, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Yeah. Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God Commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So self-judgment, self-government. Who despise government? Government! Here, this is our government. This is how we govern ourselves. The scriptures! 
Okay? And then, and like I said, these people, you know, well, what is the scripture? The Bible is mark of beast. Uh, and stuff like that. These people will do anything to justify sin. And all the way, don't judge, don't judge. Go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> and if something comes out, if the Lord has me to go somewhere else and it's different than what I say, the Lord's the one who's leading this, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31 on to verse 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. What is this talking about? Hold your place and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Again, okay, like I told you. Remember this where Paul said, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should, should be judged of you or of men's judgment or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. What does that mean? And like I said, the, the heretics will say, see, you're not supposed to judge, not before the time. Don't judge me for doing what the scriptures uh, says not to do. What is this talking about? For if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. What is this talking about? But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned of the world. And look at verse 4 in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Today, how does, this is a trick question, how does the Lord judge you? You understand? But see, you got these guys who say that the Bible is the mark of the beast, the, those idiots over there, or say, you know, put down the book, or they, or whatever. No. Scripture. Scripture. We examine ourselves. And how does God judge us today, right now? Right now. Through the Scripture. And see, when you got someone coming around saying, don't judge. They don't want the judgment that is given in Scripture. But they'll go to their men, they'll go to the traditions of Catholics and find all other ways to get around their sin. Scripture. The, the Scripture is the standard where we are going to judge angels. He has exalted his word even above his own name. Okay, It's the Scripture that is our judge right here. This is how we judge ourselves. We judge ourselves first. And because we do that, we have a perfect standard. Therefore, I, as the church of the living God, who has the Lord within him, I can judge you. Because I judge myself first, according to this. And you're going to say that something is something and it pertains unto Christ? Okay, I'm going to judge what you say according to this. And when what you say doesn't line up with this, especially within this dispensation, I'm going to pounce on that. As well, you should. Okay? The authorized version is our standard for judgment, brethren. It's our standard for judgment. Now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 13 now. Okay? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, spiritual? Okay? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor, idol nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate guys who act like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, sodomites, 
nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall have any, shall inherit, excuse me, shall inherit the kingdom of God. This is referring to the spiritual. Okay? Why? Because you have these other things in the way. Okay? Kingdom of God here, which is mentioned twice, is not the kingdom, the physical. This is the spiritual. Okay? And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God, capital S, the Lord himself. And here, and here, and here, and here it is. And here is where these guys will go to, and here it is, about defending their God-given right to worship the God of the Catholics one day a year and call other people's lost, lost for pointing it out. Hey, you're worshiping the God of Catholicism and all their traditions, okay? That, that thing was created by the Catholics and you who claim to hate the Catholics, the Catholic religion, uh, you're going to defend it. Hmm. But here it is. All things are lawful to me. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought. But I will not. But I will not be brought under the power of any. And right here it talks about food again. Meat for, meats for the belly. And the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Fornicating with Catholicism. Yeah. Yeah. And right there, all things are lawful for you. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. You, as a saved, born again, brother or sister of the Church of the Living God, you're not being held at gunpoint to do or not to do. You can go right ahead as the church of the living God and make the decision. The Lord within you would be like, hey, what are you doing? What, what are you? Stop! Don't do it! I'm warning you! Okay? But see, he's not going to force you. He may put things in your way, but you, you know, you get that sin and that lust for sin in your heart. You'll go to any, you'll find any way to justify it, won't you? All things are lawful for you. You, as the church of the living God, could at any given moment make the decision to go out there and get a bag of marijuana, roll it up and smoke it and get high as a kite. You, as the church of the living God, at any given moment, can make the choice to go by yourself. What, what, what is that thing? Um, what is that? Um, um, the, um, 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 uh, the PlayStation. You can go out there, drop your money on that, get games, and sit there and waste your life away for hours and hours. All things are lawful unto you, but all things aren't expedient. You, as the church of the living God, can go out there and make the decision to worship the Catholic God one day a year and, and justify and make every kind of justification you can and, and twist the scriptures and try to wean, wean it into this. All things are lawful for you. Okay? Yes, they are. You have to make the right decisions. God is not making you do anything by force, you have to make the right decisions. Okay? And that's liberty. Okay? Liberty given unto us by Christ's self-sacrifice. Yes, but you got to remember, charity and liberty are two different things. Our liberty as the Church of the Living God is derived of Christ's charity. Yes, it is. Never disputed that. But liberty is not charity, nor charity liberty. Okay? They're two different things. 
We do have that liberty. So, so right there, man. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. It's Church of the Living God. Brother, sister, you're not being held at gunpoint. You can go out and get a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> it's Church of the Living God. You can go out there and buy that bottle of booze. As the, church, as the Church of the Living God, you can go out there and buy a filth porn movie or whatever. Yes? All things are lawful for you. You got to make the right decisions. You're not being forced to do either yay or nay. Now, if you're saved, born again, converted, and the Lord lives in you, and you're going to go and try to do one of those things, the Lord's going to be like, hey, what are you doing? Stop. What, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Hey, hello, McFly. Uh, uh, you, okay, you, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You're st oh, you're still going to go. You still want that, huh? You know what will happen? The Lord's like, fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want that so bad? You're going to go through it. You're going to try to justify it. You're going to go through the, whatever it is. You're bound and determined to do what I told you not to do. Go ahead. Then you're going to suffer the consequences of that. Oh. Oh. Consequences. This is the same thing about those, you know, with David, King David. The Lord still used David. Yes, he did. But, you know, the consequences that David paid for his mess up with Bathsheba? Quite extensive. But yes, the Lord still used them. But um, yeah, when we're up there with the Lord, we'll be able to ask, hey, David, uh, King David, sir, uh, if you would have been given a chance to uh, not do that with Bathsheba, uh, would you have done differently? And King David would look at us like, come here, <laughs> something wrong with you? <laughs> King David regretted because he the sword never left his house for what he did. But right here, and look at what it's in. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, which is talking about judgment, judging. And, and, that's, and that's the thing that with these guys who want to worship the Catholic God one day a year, when they come to this, this is the one thing that cannot be disputed. You're right. You're right. All things are lawful for you. You're right. You, as the church of the living God, you, you can. You can choose to worship the Catholic God once a year. All things are lawful for you. Yep. But all things are not expedient. Yes, and in order to worship that Catholic God, you're going to divide the body of Christ over it. You are the one who has caused division and contention. You are the one. You are the one. But all things are lawful for you, and all things... Uh, but all things are lawful for you, but all things are not exp expedient. All things are lawful for you, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And and in this same chapter, chapter 6, look at verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You're not your own. You don't belong to you anymore. But all things are lawful for you. And you know, when someone brings that up, so like, what are you gonna say? It's like, well, that's the truth. Yeah, you, you, it's yeah, you can go ahead and do you as a saved brother or sister, you can go out there and do anything that a lost pagan heathen could do. The Lord's not gonna forcibly stop you. 
I mean, he may. Granted, you might be driving out to go get your, your drugs or whatever, and he might decide to have a tree fall on your car and take you out of there. He could do that. But, you know, you, he, we got to make the right decisions. Because if he forcibly does that, then we, then, we're, then we have no choice. Then it is like what Calvin says. And it isn't. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, just one verse. Again, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things that if I not. And, and of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, about they, uh, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, verse 20, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So judging again. <laughs> Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 1 unto verse 11. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. This is for saved people, okay? But fornication, physical and also spiritual, and all uncleanness or covetousness, God abhorreth the covetous, let it not be once named among you as become as saints, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, idolatry, idolizing the thing that you're going after, or the main source of your idolatry, yourself. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You hear the gospel once and you reject it? God's wrath is for you, your child of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them! With who? With those of the world. With those who go against Scripture. Be not there. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Hmm. And see, what so many of us face nowadays is family, right? Family who are lost or family who say they are Christians, and they, they are, going against Scripture and want you to go along with them to do things that are against Scripture. Okay? But see, we're family. We're supposed to be together. And in order to have unity with these Christians, what is sacrificed? Absolute truth. Isn't it? You want unity today? Unity today comes at the sacrifice of absolute truth. True unity comes through absolute truth. Then why isn't, why isn't the body of Christ truly unified? I believe that the body of Christ truly is unified. There are many people who say they are and are not. There are those that are but are messed up with the traditions of men and have chosen flesh and the tradition of Catholics over absolute truth, and hence divide the body of Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And in 1 Timothy chapter 5, 
All things are lawful for you, but all things are not expedient. Have you figured out why the Lord had me to uh, give to you that in um, Second Kings, brother? Have you figured that one out yet? First Timothy chapter 5. This is 20 on to verse 22. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee, theref I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another. Do nothing by partiality. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Hmm. Family member wants you to go along with something that you know is contrary to the scriptures and you decide to go ahead and go along with them for the sake of unity and peace. Let's say it's scripture. Well, you, we just looked at it. Okay. Taking, like, let's say that you have a family member who wants you to take them to the doctor. Now, that's not the same thing because as a consequence of what we have done to this body and are, you know, going to an emergency room or something like that. But like I said, the consequence of a poor diet uh, when you were lost and you did this or that to the body and you have no choice, but you got to go to a doctor. That, that's something different. That's something different. But say you are a family member that... Um, is employed, say, at a strip club or as a bartender, okay? And they say, hey, brother, hey, you're my brother. You drive me to work. You want me to drive you to go to a place to serve people alcohol. I can't do it. Well, why? Just drive me to work. You're a bartender. I, I can't. Or, okay, or your mother or your sister who are supposed to be keepers at home and they're Christians and they're going out and working in the world and they're like, hey, can you take me? It's like, you're supposed to be a keeper at home. I can't. I'm sorry. going to have a tough time, but plain fact is, Neither be partakers of other men's sins. Now, you know, your family member is like, hey, you take me to the store or something to get food or uh, I need some pit putty or uh, mental floss or something like that. That, that It's like, okay. But, you know, like, you know, you're bro you, got a, you got a brother or a sister. It's like, hey, you're driving me to the store to get a pack of cigarettes. No. Come on, it's just... No, I can't, man. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't drive you. I can't do that. You used to... I, I used to, yeah, but I, I can't. Okay? Hey, you drive me to the store so I can get a fifth of liquor? I, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. And see... That's judgment. That's judgment. Because we have a perfect standard. And our perfect standard says, don't be partakers of other men's sins. And if you are going to partake and be in league with someone who is doing something that you know is contrary to Scripture, okay? And that's something that is between you and the Lord. All things are uh, lawful for you, but all things are not expedient. That is something that is between you and the Lord. And now let's go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Verses 1 under verse 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. 
Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. These Christians, we are to love one another. Love doesn't judge. You're judging me. I'm going to kill you because you're judging me. And they cast you out. He, would, he wouldn't take me to go get a fifth of liquor. You're, you're a Christian, huh? Yeah, don't judge me. Don't judge me. And they cast you out. As, as if you're some strange one, right? Like Peter says, <laughs> like Peter says, you know, they look at you strangely because you don't follow them to the same excess of riot. Micah, Micah 7, Micah 7, Micah 7. See, when you take a stand for truth, now like I said, you know, like if you, like for an example, you got to take one of your family members to a, to a doctor or something, that, that's, that's a different thing. There are things to consider, you know, consequences of what they have done to their own bodies. Okay, the emergency room. <laughs> but you're going to take your father to go get a fifth of liquor. You're going to take your mother to go get a pack of cigarettes. You're going to take your brother or your sister to go to a profession that, that is evil. Or that a woman that ought to be a keeper at home. You're going to go take her to her employment. Well, what's the big deal? Is this absolute truth or what? And those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And for some of you, I don't envy <laughs> the, the situation. But ultimately, that's between you and the Lord. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 under verse 7. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And because we uh, seek first self-judgment to judge ourselves according to the scriptures, and we judge according to the scriptures, there are those out there, you're going to see where their heart is, whether it's in this or in the Lord. And when we do what is right and pleasing in the sight of the Lord, we got to remember, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Now, Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah, we're almost done. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongues like their bows for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. That's the Lord lamenting over the state of his people, Israel. But yet, see, he is a God of justice, a God of judgment, and a God of wrath. You mess around with the Lord long enough, you're going to irritate him. Woe be to you if you're the enemy of the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanderers. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will speak, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongues 
their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit, uh, to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. God loves everybody. God does it. God isn't a God of judgment. Okay. Don't scare them. Okay. It's all things are all things are lawful for me. I can do this. Okay. God's grace covers it all. It's a liberty issue. Yeah. I value for the truth. Only when it suits your purpose. Right, pal? And of course, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, our Lord echoes that in Micah elsewhere, but he was quoting from Micah, you know, about how a family is going to be torn apart. By what? Because one wants to worship Catholicism one day out of the year? Or what is the true divider? See, you want unity? This is always what sac is sacrificed. It is. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 and verse 39. Think not, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. We just read the, he's quoting from Micah. Okay. <laughs> he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. Oh, actually, to 53. What was I? <laughs> okay. 49 on to verse 53 in Luke chapter 12. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straight until it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. And why is the body of Christ divided today, like we already looked at? By accident. <laughs> or was it? <laughs> no. Why? This flesh. Every time, it's always the flesh that gets in the way. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The man's enemies shall be they of his own house. We are to judge, and we are to judge righteous judgment. Like our Lord says, look not on the outer appearance, but judge righteous judgment, according to the scriptures. Okay? And, you know, brethren, these times, especially these last months, okay? Especially these last months. You're going to see a lot of paganism. You're going to see a lot of idolatry. And you're going to see a lot of people calling people lost. And they are the ones that are causing division. They are the ones. They are the ones causing the division. By adhering to the traditions of men. They are the ones who are doing it. Okay? And they see, and we can, like we looked at at the very beginning of this video, we can go through any kind of hoop and justify just about anything, can't we? And the truth of the matter is, all things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. Yea, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not.
Beware of those who say don't judge. Because they who say don't judge don't even judge themselves. But Paul said, and I don't judge my own self. No, he didn't. He let the Lord judge him. How does the Lord judge us today? Through the scriptures. We are to examine ourselves. That's what Paul meant. It's not that he didn't have any self-government. No, he's like, oh, well, my judgment is flawed because I can justify anything. Can't you? Can't you? You can justify your smoking. You can justify your drinking. You can justify your watching television. You can justify your fornication. You can justify anything. Can't you? And some of you, some of you are versed enough in Scripture that you can find to justify your sin through the Scripture. Lord have mercy on you, man. But see, when Paul said, I judge not my own self, but he who judges me is the Lord. How does the Lord judge you today? Through the scripture. And we are commanded to examine ourselves. And if judgment begin at the house of God, how do we examine ourselves? By what? The scripture. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you stand for truth. It's going to cost you. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's going to cost you. But then again, what happens when you decide to go along with it? To do what you know you shouldn't. Is there any examples of this in Scripture? There is. The, Acts chapter 21. We're almost done. We, we have to touch on this. We have to touch on this. Acts chapter 21. In the description box, I found it. The Lord had me to do a video on Acts chapter 21 talking about this specifically. Okay? So, the, and the, our Lord's will be done, but maybe not our way. That will be the video on Acts 21. Uh, and watch that video. Um, but on Acts chapter 21, Paul. Paul who was warned not to go to Jerusalem. The Lord's like, hey, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go. Okay, he was warned, I believe, three times. Don't go to Jerusalem. But what did Paul do? Paul, who had a pride problem, went anyway. Now, the Lord turned it out for, for a good reason, yes, but initially, the Lord didn't want Paul to go to Jerusalem. He didn't. But Paul went anyway. And when Paul went to Jerusalem, he went to Brother James. Brother James, who had his own struggles. Watch that video. Uh, our Lord's will be done, but maybe not our way. Watch that video where we talk about this in Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, verses 18 on to verse 25. And the day following, Paul went in with, uh, with us unto James. And all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Now Paul went out of his way to say, Hey, to be right with God and to stay saved, we don't need to go, we don't have to do the things of the law. Okay, we're not under the law. That's what Galatians is about, okay? Paul was very, you know, you don't have to keep the law to stay saved, be saved, or be right with God today, okay? All right? To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, okay? But James says that there are those who are zealous of the law, Okay, and they talk about this in Acts chapter 15, about those who believe, but they yet they got to be circumcised and do the things of Moses. In other words, they, they have to keep the law. They got to keep the commandments. They got to be under law. And they settled that in Acts 15, the Jerusalem conference, as you will. And it was as Paul was saying all along. Okay, but Paul amongst these people 
And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Okay? He was saying that it didn't, it wasn't necessary for salvation. He circumcised Timothy. Okay? He circumcised Timothy. Okay? It's not a necessity for salvation. That's what Paul was saying. These people who James was, you know, kind of putting off on the Paul, they were believing that they still had to do those things self-ethically. And Paul knew better. Paul knew better. See, Paul didn't, was not speaking against Moses. I mean, he's like, he said this himself, the law is good in Romans chapter 7. Okay? He did. Absolutely. What Paul was saying was, those things are not needful, pertinent for our salvation today. Okay? They're not salvific. That's what Paul was saying. But see, these Jews who were zealous for the law, they believed. They believed in Jesus, but they were also, they got to keep the commandments. Got to keep the law. We're Jews. Them Gentiles, they, 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 they're not like us because God is a respecter of persons. See, James struggled with that. James struggled with that. Watch that video. Watch that video. Please, watch it. Okay? And they are informed against, informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it there for? The multitude must needs come together. How are they going to come together? By doing the things of the law which were not needful for salvation, but these Jews thought it still was? For they will hear that thou art come. Do thou, do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on, on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, that thou that but that thou but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. Paul knew that keeping the law as for our salvation was not necessary. And he was about to embark in doing things which he knew were not necessary for salvation. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such things. That they, 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 they Gentiles, we don't expect the, that of you. Yeah, yeah, we're all saved. But see, we're, we, we're different. We, we have to keep these. No. See, James struggled with that. James struggled with that. He did. He did. Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. And if we were to continue to read, before an offering, a sacrifice, a blood offering thing was made, is when because it says, uh, uh, and verse 27, and when the seven days were almost ended, it was on the seventh day when a sacrifice was to be made. They were almost ended. The Lord stepped in. It's like, okay, I've had enough. Okay, I told you not to come here. Look, you're going contrary to what I said for today anyway. I'm getting involved. Okay? Paul. Paul. Paul himself. It's so lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Paul knew. He knew what he was doing was contrary to what he was even saying. He wasn't against the law. What he was saying that the law wasn't necessary for salvation today. But see, these Jews did think it was necessary for salvation today. So Paul in this went against what he himself was saying. And the Lord allowed it for so long until a sacrifice was to be made in verse 27. Like I said, watch that video. We go through it in depth, okay? That's when the Lord, before the, uh, the sacrifice was made, that's when the Lord stepped in. It's like, okay, that, that, this ain't happening. I died, buried, and rose again. Third day, according to the scriptures, shed my blood. You don't do this anymore. It's not necessary for salvation. Paul was warned. 
our example. But see, see, this, this, see, this is the beauty. This is the beauty of Romans 7. Romans 7. 25 and 20, uh, 24 and 25. This is the beauty of it. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of, law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. And also, you know, uh, Peter, he who, who had brethren sent from James, dissembled with that uh, us and them kind of thing, which is something that James struggled with. He did. He did. James, the author of the book of James, who was speaking to the Jews, which wrote that for specifically the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, there are things that cross dispensational lines for us today in the book of James, yes, but it's primarily for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. So see, Paul knew. Paul knew what James was wanting him and saying to him to do. Paul knew that it wasn't in line with what the Lord had revealed to him and through him. But in order to make peace, All things are lawful for us, but all things are not. Or all things are not expedient, excuse me. That's going to be it for this video. We gave you a lot to digest, um, okay? And you, you saw it, okay? I thought I messed up. For a moment there, it's like, ah, oh, great, I'm going to have to stop and redo this. No, uh, you know, that's what I talk about, you know? This is as it happens, okay? This isn't edited or anything like that. No magic or anything like that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No. And what I thought were errors, mistakes in the notes, the Lord, you, you saw it. So. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Paul said, I judge not my own self, but he who judges me is the Lord. And yet we are told to examine ourselves and yet uh, and to search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. This is how we, this, this is how we examine ourselves. This, the authorized version of the scriptures. We judge ourselves. And see, those who say don't judge, don't judge themselves. They judge themselves, they compare themselves among themselves, and the scriptures say those who do that are not wise. We judge ourselves according to absolute truth. And because we are his body, his ambassadors, having the word of, uh, the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation, therefore we judge others, beginning with ourselves, but we judge others this the sword of the spirit the authorized version this you can trust but for some of you yea hath God said it's going to be it for this video I'm going to get this uploaded thank you so much for watching this if you do I hope this has helped some of you any questions comments um, God's got quite a bit of things going on especially this week um got quite a bit of things going on so please keep us in your prayers um please pray for us and we pray for so many of you there's a young brother of ours in another nation our young brother at uh um there's a young brother of ours who's gonna go, who's gonna be going through some stuff Keep him in your prayers. And as an example, my hat's off to you, young brother. I love you very much. Because this young brother has more guts to stand for the truth than most of us do. Thank you for watching if you do. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.